have a question for you. Um, how many of you have ever been street harassed? Probably. Yeah, OK, keep your hands up, because I have a few more questions. Um, th thanks for sharing them, though. Um, how many of you have ever had a man talk over you or take credit for your idea at work? Yeah, OK. And um, how many of you have ever had a friend, family member, or dating partner not listen when you said the word no? Look around you. It's, it's ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous, it's sad, it's enraging, et cetera. Um, I was first street harassed around the average age for girls in this country, 11. Uh, it had the intended effect. It made me scared. And uh, repeated harassment reminded me constantly of my vulnerability to rape. Little did I know that that experience would lead me to my life's work. I'm Lauren Taylor. Um, I've been introduced, but um, I, I teach people skills for stopping, preventing, interrupting, and healing from gender-based violence and I write extensively on violence prevention and empowerment. So what is gender-based violence? Most people, when they think of it, they only think of abuse in relationships and um, sexual assault. It is those things, and it's also a whole lot more. So it's everything from unwanted sexting to stalking, from uh, emotional abuse to trafficking, from unwanted touching to full-on attack. Core to my work is the knowledge that we, we as women, we who are LGBTQIA+, we who are targeted for gender-based violence, are never at fault for the harassment, abuse, and assault that we experience. There is nothing, there's nothing. I'm going to write that on the board. <laughs> nothing we can do or not do to cause someone to harm us. The responsibility lies 100% with the person who chooses to cross our boundaries. You probably already know this. Like if I went around this room and said, you know, who, who, who has the responsibility? All of you would give me the right answer. It's, that, it's on them, right? But it's a whole other thing to hold that deeply in your heart and to feel it in every cell of our bodies. Almost everybody who has shared their experience with me over the years, and that is thousands and thousands of people, has a should or a but. I should have seen that red flag. I should have yelled more. Um, you know, I shouldn't have gone with them to their room. But they seem so nice, right? The shame and self-blame are heartbreaking and honestly enraging. I believe that we need to know fully that harassment, abuse, and assault are never our fault, deeply in our hearts and in every cell of our bodies. Why is that so hard? Because we're taught that it's our responsibility to keep ourselves safe and our fault if something happens anyway. Because shame and self-blame keep the focus off the person who chooses to cross our boundaries, and that keeps patriarchy alive. Let's take a minute to breathe into that. It's not my fault. It wasn't my fault. I deserve to be safe. Now, if you would repeat after me, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. I deserve to be safe. I deserve to be safe. Thank you. It's very moving to hear all, all of you saying that. That is the first, it's not your fault. The second, it's not your fault. That what, what's also not your fault is that it's not your fault if you were unable to prevent it. It's not your fault if you didn't respond perfectly or the way you had planned. It's not your fault if you're not as confident or as assertive as you would like to be. 
It's not your fault if you didn't speak up. It's not your fault if you stayed in the job or in the relationship. It's not your fault. I need to say this again. It is not your fault if you freeze. Why not? Well, as Barbie recently reminded us, <laughs> it's our old friend patriarchy. Society and culture teach most of us that it is more important to be nice, compliant, and ugh, likable. That saying no is somehow a bad thing. Even though it's not our fault or our responsibility, we don't have to wait around for the world to change because that could take a while. There are things that we can do. Here, in the relative safety of this room, I'm going to ask you to adventure with me a little bit to play with breaking these rules. Of course, participation is optional. I'm going to say some short sentences, and I ask you to repeat them back to me. Don't come any closer. No hugs right now. I'm not interested. Please stop talking. Uh, please stop asking. I'm not interested. Please stop asking. Although, please stop talking. Definitely <laughs> could be relevant in some situations. Yeah. Please don't comment on my body. Don't touch me. I won't answer personal questions at work. I won't answer personal questions at work. I can't have a conversation while you're yelling. I need you to lower your voice. I can't have a conversation while you're yelling. I need you to lower your voice. Get off me. Get off me. Let's try that with a little um, body language to back it up, right? You all are like, get off me. Okay. <laughs> So let's see a little, 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 you know, showing them that you mean it with your body too. Get off me. Get off me. Okay then. <laughs> That's happening. Let me go. Let me go. Okay, shake it out. Notice how that felt. Shake it, shake it out. <laughs> if your default is yes, and for many of us it is, it's super important that you also have no as part of your vocabulary. If we're always responding to other people and their needs, even their unspoken needs, there's no room in our own lives for our, our wants, our needs, and ourselves. We're going to practice saying the often dreaded and difficult no. I'll ask a question, and all you can say is no. Again, participation is, of course, voluntary. <laughs> Could I use your phone? No. OK. You, you, <laughs> that's good. You're not having any trouble with that one. <laughs> Could I leave my kids with you while I run to the no. store? No. <laughs> Could I use you as a reference? No. no. Can I copy your homework? No. no. Can I tag you in a photo? No. no. Can I touch your hair? No. No. <laughs> will you have sex with me? No. Please, please, will you, will you cover my shift? No. Make me lunch? No. Could you lend me some money? No. Just, just save my seat? No. OK. Take a breath <laughs> again. So, so that was kind of fun, right? I saw some energy happening and some, some, some enjoyment. In real life, it can sometimes be harder. Yeah. And we are often uh, tempted to explain, apologize, give an excuse, help the person find an alternative solution, like who else can watch their kids, um, who else can cover their shift. Um, so, it makes sense in real life that you might, in fact, choose to soften your no. The exercise is to help you feel what feelings come up when you simply say no, 
because we have a right to do that, right? Now we're going to practice something we do want. Think about your bottom lines in relationships. It could be something relatively um, shared and relatively simple, relatively common, relatively simple. Like, for example, no hitting, right? A bottom line in a relationship. But it could be something more complex and nuanced and personal, perhaps stemming from something in your own history or uh, an issue in a current relationship. These bottom lines, now I want you to put it into a sentence. I'm going to give you a second to think of your bottom line. Sorry, I got off track. Give you a second to think about a bottom line for you. Put it in a sentence that begins, I want you to. The most effective requests are ones that are measurable. So for example, if what you want to say is something like, I want you to respect me, it's more effective if you ask instead for the behaviors that, will, that, that you want that show respect. For example, I want you to let me finish without interrupting, or I want you to show up when you say you will. That way, both you and they will know if it's happening. Now, turn to someone next to you and say your I want you to sentence, and they will simply listen, say thank you, and then it's their turn. Go forth. Okay, welcome back. In decades of teaching and in doing the research for the book that I co-authored, I've seen the power of getting in touch with our genuine yeses and our authentic noes. I have felt it in myself, in my own growth, and this is work that's never done. Think about this. All of your yeses are compromised if you can't say a heartfelt, authentic no. At the end of the day, we still live in a sexist society. But there are things that we can do. We can ask for what we want, and we can set limits. We can spend less time and energy on fear and vigilance. We can repair some of the damage done to us by rape culture, and we can take up more space in our own lives and in the world. And if enough of us do this, and if we join together, we can actually make change in these oppressive systems. Even though empowerment self-defense, which is what I teach, is a lot about boundaries, we're not all about the no. So now I'm going to ask you to think about something you want to say yes to. Some examples from me. I would like to say yes to safety for everyone. I would like to say yes to enthusiastic consent. And I would like to say yes to more dancing. <laughs> so uh, can I hear from a few people what you want to say yes to? More dancing. More dancing. More diverse books. More diverse books. <laughs> more calling out sexist behavior in public. More calling out sexist behavior in public. OK, so together on the count of three, we're going to say yes to safety for all, more diverse books, calling out sexist, and I'm going to amend you, racist, ableist, homophobic behavior in public. Uh, there was one more that I lost. OK, we're going to say yes to all those things on the count of three. One, two, three. Yes! Thank you so much for taking some risks with me. I invite you to go out and claim your bigger life.